Hello everybody, my name is Jody Hayes, I serve as the county's chief executive officer for Stanislaus County and in that role I also serve as the director of emergency services for Stanislaus County. Joining me today is Gino Patrizio, chief executive officer for Memorial Medical Center here in Modesto. We're here today to talk to you about the initial modeling that Stanislaus County has put together in response to the COVID-19 emergency response. We get a lot of questions about when are we expecting to peak here in Stanislaus County, what do our numbers look like and so forth, and I want to explain to you the conversations that we've had with our public health officer, with our epidemiologist, and the entire team that's supporting this effort. And then I want to also ask Gino to talk about how does this actually impact our local hospitals here and why these public health mitigations are so important for us. The first thing I want to share is that the public health model that we're introducing to our community this week is based on a model from the University of Pennsylvania. This is a model that was provided by the California Department of Public Health to all local public health offices within the last week and a half or so. Since we received that model, we've been working daily to try to perfect it, to add the data that's necessary for us to get a true projection for Stanislaus County. But along the way, we've also noticed that numerous other public health models have come forward. Uh, we've seen models released by the University of Washington, most recently uh, Stanford University, and we've seen John Hopkins University and others. Many, many entities are hard at work trying to develop what they think is the best um, projection and tool for communities uh, at the local level, the state, and even the national level. So you're probably a little confused at all these different models that are out there. And you see media reports around why are the dates different and so forth. Well, the dates are different because every one of these models is developed differently. Every one of them uses a different set of variables, um, and they're not all going to align perfectly. So I'm gonna share with you a basic concept that we work within in our operation. Number one, all models are wrong in some way. There is no perfect statistical projection of how this is going to work in any community. However, if you have an effective model, they can be useful, and that's important. So all models are wrong, but some are useful. And that's essentially the work that's underway for us, is trying to determine where are the useful statistical projections and how we can implement those in Stanislaus County. So the first thing I want to introduce about the University of Pennsylvania model is that this is a mathematical model, not a statistical model. Some of the others that have come out recently are statistical models that will give us specific variances at confidence levels and so forth. We don't have that in this particular model, so it's more or less a straight mathematical model. We think going forward we'll be able to introduce some statistical models in Stanislaus County that will give us a greater confidence level. The next thing I can share with you is that we're only showing about 60 days out in this model, and it's for that confidence issue specifically. We feel that we're confident that the next 60 days is probably going to look a lot like what this model provides to us, but we're not so confident with how the data is modeling beyond 60 days. So at this point, we can't tell you specifically when is our projected peak in Stanislaus County. There are arguments that that peak may be in May, it could be beyond and so forth, but at this point, we're not able to determine that. We're hopeful that in the next week or so that we will have modeling that will give us a more definitive peak here in Stanislaus County, and we'll definitely introduce you to that as soon as we get it. For now, we're gonna go ahead and share with you that initial model for the next 60 days. I'm actually gonna, uh, we're gonna have links to this model um, within this uh, video posting. So they're available to you as well, the data that we're gonna talk about today, and you can look at that at any time. So we're gonna go ahead and have you bring up a copy of the chart, the first chart that we'd like to review. So on this first chart, you can see that this is what we're referring to in as our model version number one. Our intent is that each week we'll release a new version of our public health modeling. So by next week, we'll come to you with version number two. Version number one includes data to June 5th of this year. It shows projections for 0% social distancing, which essentially means how we would behave if we were not social distancing and what would the impact of COVID-19 be in our current community um, based on that. We also have a line there of what we call 40% social distancing. And that's just a projection. It's a, it's a particular midway goal. We could do better than that, but we could certainly do worse than that if we do not pay attention to this carefully. And you can see what that model takes us out to. And it intersects essentially at our total license number of beds in Stanislaus County. We're showing actual hospitalizations. So you can see the red line is gonna tell you where we're at in terms of hospitalizations at any given moment. And it's showing total licensed beds. That's the, 
the horizontal line, the blue line that goes across the, the top of the chart. It's very clear to see in this model that without social distancing, we would overwhelm our hospital system by mid-April. It's important to note that all models that we have looked at so far reach that same conclusion. Without social distancing, we exceed our hospital capacity quickly and most likely by mid-April. This model provides this goal for 40% of social distancing, which means that we've reduced our social contact by at least 40% in Stanislaus County due to our stay-at-home orders and other public health mitigation measures. We need to stay on this curve to support our hospital systems. It's very clear. There are many questions on what our surge capabilities are, and I can tell you that the local hospital systems all have surge plans, and they'll be sharing that information along the way as well. We are looking on an ongoing basis at the data that is available from our local hospi uh, hospitals. We're tracking this on a daily basis to understand what their staffing capabilities are, their equipment, and all of the other uh, tools that are necessary for them to serve our community. We do have confidence that the hospitals collectively can support the total number of licensed beds in our community, which is approximately 1,200 in Stanislaus County. And there's actually encouraging news that they may go beyond that level if called upon in our community. There's a really important issue that the, that the hospitals still have non-COVID-19 patients. So there are individuals who are gonna need to go to the hospital and it's not going to be related to COVID-19. So though although you see that we have 1,200 licensed beds in our community, we have to recognize that a good portion of those beds will be available for our ordinary um, emergencies that may occur within our community and need support. So now we'll go ahead and show you slide chart number two. This data is a snapshot of just one day of hospital data that we receive in our community. And this data was actually taken on April 6th of this week. You can see on this chart the number of hospital beds used in our community, including ICU beds and ventilators. But please note that the ICU beds and ventilators can change quickly based on numerous factors as hospitals take action to further prepare for these potential surge in patients. And for example, the ICU data that we're showing on that day, our community was at about 80% capacity. However, today I'm filming this video for Memorial Medical Center where they're closer to about 50% capacity. So please keep in mind, these numbers change quickly and hospitals have plans to convert routine hospital beds into ICU beds if available and if needed. So Gino, if you could take this complicated uh, issue of all this public health modeling and so forth, and if you could just try to put it into context for what it actually means for our medical providers, the doctors and nurses here in Stanislaus County. Sure, thank you, Jody. Thank you, everybody. This is Gino Patrizio. I'm, I'm here uh, with the team at Memorial Medical Center. First of all, let me tell you, uh, I couldn't be prouder to be in a community that is so full of incredibly dedicated, courageous, selfless uh, healthcare and hospital providers. Every single one of them show up to work every day to take care of this community. And I know I don't just speak for the folks at Memorial Medical Center. I speak for my colleagues at Doctors Medical Center and their affiliates, at Kaiser and their affiliates, Oak Valley, even the folks up the hill in Sonora, all the folks in those clinics that take care of you. Couldn't be prouder to be part of that group. I do have some good news for you, though. Uh, the good news is that each of you can be part of this solution. As Mr. Hayes said, it is incredibly important that we do everything we can to keep our disease burden low, keep this disease at bay and keep it controlled until we can develop a vaccine and really fight it at the molecular and metabolic level. But for now, each of us, each of us, every single one of us can be a champion in this. And the two simple things that each of us can do are one, maintain social distance. Jody and I, like, uh, like in the last video with Dr. Wei Shumpayan, Jody and I are good friends and we are standing six feet apart. That is good social distancing. That's number one. At the hospital, we have done a number of things to help promote that good social distancing. For example, we have canceled all meetings and meetings uh, except for meetings that are absolutely critical and those meetings are all done virtually or with the minimum number of people required to be in a room also maintaining social distance 
In addition, and this is, I know, a tough pill to swallow sometimes, but we have temporarily restricted visitation at the hospital. Again, all of this is to promote keeping our community's commitment to social distance alive, to keep those fires uh, stoked, and to keep us on the right path. Because if we do it, we will keep this disease at bay, keep our hospital facilities from being overrun with COVID-19 patients. We won't have to engage in the well thought out surge plans we have to expand our capacity. Again, if we need to engage those, we're ready, but we have the opportunity to keep this at bay. Uh, so thank you very much. And I couldn't be prouder to be a member of this community. Thank you, Gino. So in conclusion, I do want to acknowledge that when you look at this data and you look at the public health modeling, there is the possibility that we could exceed the hospital capacity in Stanislaus County. That same thing is true for every community in the state of California, at least, and most communities across our entire country. So I want you to know that we have two efforts underway to support that and plan for it. Number one is a surge location, number one, it's an alternative care site that if necessary, we can actually provide hospital type services at another location in Stanislaus County. That location is our former scenic hospital on Scenic Avenue in Modesto. Um, we have already ordered, ordered hospital beds. They're in place. We're putting together our staffing plans now. And the only thing we would have to do is coordinate with our hospitals to figure out which patients they would like to move to those facilities. But that planning is underway. It's practically ready to go if necessary. Um, if we exceeded that capacity, that's about 110 beds in our local community. If we exceeded that capacity in some unfortunate circumstance, we will have a surge location number two, probably more of like a tent type facility that you've seen on the news and other communities and so forth. So if that come, becomes necessary, we will be ready for it. Um, we'll bring more information about that uh, to you in the future, but we do want you to know we're planning for that. So as you look at all of these models going forward and you recognize that there are scenarios where we could exceed our capacity, we want you to at least know we're planning for it. We're trying to do the best job we can to support the community and residents of Stanislaus County. But number one, Gino makes the best point. We control whether or not we're going to hit that peak or not, and we control it by our actions. So we wanna thank you all very much for taking the time to watch a more lengthy explanation of our public health modeling. We're gonna to try to do this at least once per week to keep information going to the public so that you can see the actual information that we're using to plan for this emergency. Um, we hope that you're all in good health and we'll see you again next week. Thank you.